Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our first day of Quick Bites. We had a session earlier today and at lunchtime and I'm very happy to be joining you this evening, um, this afternoon um, for our second Quick Bites in our series of online learning for strong families. Um, it's a pleasure to, to have you join us, join us. I know this is a very difficult and challenging time and look forward to maybe providing some ideas and comments that might help you as you navigate um, the difficult time. The webinar logistics um, are pretty basic. Um, we have, you know, you are muted upon entry. And if you have questions, feel free to use the chat uh, option to present your questions and uh, this webinar is being recorded so I just want you to know that ahead of time that we are recording this webinar um, and so again if you have questions let us know you can put those into the chat box you are muted and the webinar is being recorded so again thank you for joining us and we'll go ahead and get started so this pro this webinar series is brought to you from the West Virginia Family Engagement Center project. And this is a US Department of Education grant that was funded to the adventure group to work throughout the state of West Virginia to help build family engagement um, across a number of schools, actually 100 schools across the state. We're, we're really excited to be working on this project. We feel that it really can provide some great resources to families and we're happy to be able to share this with families across not only West Virginia, but also the United States as we're working to help everyone navigate this challenging time during, during COVID-19. The Adventure Group is a nonprofit education consulting firm that's been around for 19 years. Um, we pride ourselves on coming up with innovative solutions to problems that um, come up in education. And so we've, we've had a lot of different programs that we've put together and certainly have enjoyed doing that. We work with students and educators and families, community members, not only in West Virginia, but really across the country. And um, like I said, we pride ourselves on looking for innovative and different op opportunities and answers to some of the challenges that we all face. <clears throat> So I am your facilitator today. My name is Ladada Taylor, and I am the president of the Adventure Group. Um, I am the director of the Family Engagement Center. I'm a former high school math teacher. I uh, was a county administrator, and I'm, I'm an entrepreneur for education. Um, I, I you know, left the classroom, and at the time of leaving the classroom, I knew that I wanted to be someone that could help build a bigger classroom so that the things that we could do to help education would be things that would just support education across the board. So it's certainly been a pleasure working in this role and um, one that I find very rewarding and I have a wonderful team of people that work with me. But I think a lot of the information that I'm bringing today, in addition to my work from Adventure and the work with the Family Engagement Project is that I'm a mom. I have two grown children. And while I can't imagine the struggles exactly of those of you that may have young children at home, I know that I can relate to where you're coming from and I wish I could have my children with me because you know we're, we're across um, different parts of the country and I so wish that we could all be together during this kind of scary time that we're under. So that's a little bit about me and my background. So today we're going to look at how can you build memories in these challenging times and I want to make sure that you know that we understand times like these are unsettling and we don't think this is something easy to do but really want to try to put this spot positive spin on it is is there a way to kind of focus on building some memories during this challenging time these times times like these are certainly very unsettling times like these create uncertainty times like these can be very painful i know that you know we have 
thousands of families in our country that have lost loved ones. We have thousands of families in our country that have um, individuals from their family that are sick. We have parents that are trying to work at home or family members that are trying to work at home and juggle trying to educate their children. Perhaps you have elderly parents and you're trying to care for them or someone in a nursing home. You know, there are just so many different scenarios here and we understand that these times can be very painful. We know that times like these won't be forgotten. And the other side of this is that we know times like these, our children will remember. And so we won't forget these, but our children will remember what happened during these times. And I think that's what really encouraged us to think about this topic for one of our webinars in this series. So um, as you think about this, you know, the whole concept of memories, I think, is extremely important. So I would like for you to just think of someone in your life, in your world that has, um, when I say somebody that's helped you um, or you can think of whenever we say building good memories, you, there's someone that comes to mind. I mean, for me, it's, it's my grandma. You know, she always helped us build good memories no matter what we were doing. And I'm sure that all of us have somebody we can think of in our life. And I think that that's an important thing for us to remember as we're working through these challenging times. You know, we want to be those individuals that can maybe help our children remember something positive. I also think that we have the, the great challenge of being the ones to help our children navigate through this. And I think whatever the age of our children or our siblings or whatever, you know, the case may be your students, if you happen to be a teacher, you know, we are the people that can help them navigate this and feel safe and loved. And so times like these are going to be something that children will remember. And if we can help to build some memories that are positive in these challenging times, I think it will be a real plus for everyone. So that's what we want to talk about a little bit today. So the time to build memories, um, you know, this is kind of going with that time theme. This is the time to build memories. And I want to just talk briefly about these bullets, but then also kind of dig a little deeper and think about how we, we might address these. So. I believe that a focus on building memories is something that should always be at the top of our priority list as a leader in our family, as a leader with a group of people. And I don't think it matters what, what our child's age is or what the situation happens to be. I think that when we reflect on that individual that perhaps you could think of when I ask you about someone that always helped you build good memories, when we think to that person, whether they're still with us or they aren't, you know, all we have left are those memories. So I think it's so important for us to think about how can we take this challenging time and really try to emphasize that focus on building memories. I think our children will remember how we've navigated these tough times and the example that you're setting for them will shape them for a lifetime. I know that's not easy. That's not easy for anyone dealing with this certainly very challenging opportunity or time, but it is an opportunity for us to set that example for them. This time will define their childhoods. And you might think, you know, how does that work? What does that mean? If you think about your lifetime, um, perhaps depending on your age, maybe the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963 really defined your childhood. Maybe it was the Challenger explo explosion in 1986 that always stuck with you as one of those things that happened during your childhood. For my children, it was 9-11. That shaped their, their thinking, the way that they handled things, the way that they thought about things. I, I can still remember exactly where they were, you know, they were in school, but I remember that I was supposed to be going to a meeting in Washington, D.C. for one of our projects. 
And I remember that my daughter, who was in early high school, was extremely upset. She may have been in middle school, and she was trying to call me and get a hold of me because she was afraid that I was already on my way um, to Washington. So as that day impacted all of us, you know, that was that defining time for my children when they were growing up. And so I think that, you know, what we have the opportunity to do, as challenging as it might be to think of, is that we get to have the chance to show them how to handle difficult times, to make sure that they know they're supported and loved. And I think, you know, this can be a very valuable, valuable thought process for us as we're thinking about how we can shape this experience for our children. So a couple of quotes that I, I like that I think certainly tie to this conversation for us, you know, at the end of the day, all that matters is love and memories. So make sure you give it and make sure you make them. I really like that quote when I found it. And the second one is one that I actually have um, in a bedroom in our house, actually in my daughter's room, it's the best things in life are the people you love, the places you go, and the memories you make. And I think that, you know, given these challenging times, you know, it is, um, I'm going to let someone back in, um, it is a time when, you know, we want to make sure that we remember these things. Um, so the best things in life are the people and you have the opportunity to be spending lots of time together, which I know can be very difficult, but it's the places you go and the memories you make. And I, I think that both of these quotes just really speak to the thought that we do want to focus on memories and how can we take a challenging time and build memories that can be positive. So I don't have all the answers. I'm pretty sure that none of us have all the answers of how to build memories, but I think there are some thoughts and some ideas that you might find helpful. And I am sure that you can build on these, customize them to what works better for your family, but just some ideas so that you can look at this challenging situation. And I know, again, that there are many, many struggles for so many that you could think about doing some of these things. And as you're doing them, think about the memory that you might actually be building with your children. And I think it's kind of hard for us to do that, but I think it's something worth doing. So maybe it's telling stories together. You know, I, I have a friend that uh, talked about having her grandchildren for holidays and, um, she, she said that they would be at the dining room table and they would start dinner and one person would start a story. Normally she would get it started. And then she'd have the next person at the table add to the story. And she would laugh so fondly about her middle grandson that always had the most creative mind and came up with the biggest ideas in this story as they went around the table. So something so simple like that, maybe something that when your kids are 30, 40 years old, they'll think, remember that time when this was going on and we couldn't go to school and we were trying to have school at home and we told these stories that might be something that is a memory for them maybe you can do some type of journaling together maybe you can work on creating cards and signs i know that we've seen a lot of that in communities across the country signs thanking healthcare workers thanking the garbage man whatever it might be but doing activities like that together a favorite is finger painting with pudding, especially if you have younger children. Simple thing, but something to get everybody doing something together. Cooking, as I'm sure you're well aware, you can use those recipes and teach a lot of math, but you can also have a lot of fun cooking together. If it's Mickey Mouse pancakes or if it's a, a, a big dinner meal that the child gets the, has the opportunity to help you prepare. I think it's also good idea to dream together. You know, that could be another memory building activity that you might decide to, to, to do where you can dream with each other and create big dreams or small dreams and however you want to frame it, but giving children the opportunity to think about what they want to do and where they want to go and what kind of things they may do. Um, 
lay in the yard and watch for watch watch the clouds watch for birds and have a chance to hold hands and talk to each other i think it's important to listen to really listen and isn't that hard in the challenges that we're facing um, you know there are so many things going on so many things to distract us from the immediate person in front of us and i think children really will appreciate and remember that you were able to really sit down and listen to them. Um, and so while that might seem simple, I think it's a very important example to consider. Maybe you host a game night, maybe your children are grown, maybe they live away. That's what we've been doing. And you see that on social media and on TV and, you know, we, we get on and everybody comes in from their location and we can see each other and we play games that we might play if we were together. You know, there are lots of games that you can purchase or maybe you just do a card game. Lots of different ways to do that. But I know that a lot of families are, hosting game nights together and using um, technology to virtually connect if you have that option. You might also think about building a memory book, you know, put together a, a very simple book of different things that you've done every day and maybe some of these memory building activities that you um, have have worked on with your children, with your family. Maybe you make a memory book so that you remember the things that you did together to keep everybody positive and happy and uplifted during this difficult time of this pandemic. You know, do things for others. I know, you know, that there are many ways that you can leave food on a doorstep or, you know, whatever those examples might be in your own communities, but maybe there's something you can do for others. And I think another great gift that we can give our children is modeling grace and patience because we all know that we need lots of that during this difficult time. But I would say to you, I don't think I have the answer for everything, you know, and it's not, this list is not intended in that way, but create your own list. You know, what kinds of things um, relate to your family? You know, my family is different than yours. We all look a little different. We all like different things. So figure out what works for your family. Take on a project together of something that you've wanted to do around your house. Maybe it's building something, maybe it's cleaning something, but whatever it is, take that list of ideas that I gave you, but make it your own. Every family is unique. And don't be afraid to encourage something new. Um, I would also say to you that free and frugal are the best and the most memorable because it's spending that quality time together that really makes a difference. And I think your time and undivided attention is what means the most. So the reality is to build memories when times are hard is really about surviving. You're in, we're all in survival mode, wondering how long this is gonna last. So many examples. So times are hard and it's really about surviving. But you can be the hero. You can be the example that no matter what happens, this person is always the one that kept us upbeat, that kept us focused, kept us going. And remember that your attitude is everything your actions will make a very big difference and your attitude is everything and again when we talk about an example your children will see this and they'll notice how you've handled things and it's a lifetime um, example that will impact them forever and that they will model and i can say that because I, I know that that's what my children have done. You know, if it's sending cards, whatever you've encouraged them to do, however you've built those memories all the time, but especially in a time like this, you'll see them as grown ups doing those same things. And I, I also want to say to you that there's a lot of pressure on everybody, and we all understand that. And so remember to be is enough. Be intentional about building those memories, be positive. Be present, that's so important, and find time to be relaxed, either on your own or with an armful of children that are just so happy to be close to you and feel that safety in your arms. Those things will make a huge difference 
and building those memories, again, will last a lifetime. I hope that this has provided you with some thoughts for um, how you might be able to take a tough time and build some memories. You can uh, get more information about our organization on Twitter, um, through our website, um, Facebook, and you know, we look forward to being able to provide services or assistance in any way that we can. Um, we are doing several of these webinars and they will be posted on our website. And so if there are other topics that you might find interesting, um, we encourage you to go there. They're all very short, very similar to this. We know that your time is precious and um, it will give you the opportunity to um, maybe hear some ideas on some other topics that might be of help to you. Um, we're here to support you. This is my email and my phone number. If I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out either by phone or by email. I'd be happy to answer any questions or talk through um, anything that might be of interest to you if maybe I sparked an idea. And, you know, this was just the reference for, um, for this particular webinar. And um, if you have any questions, uh, certainly you can go into the chat room and, and open those up or list those if you'd like, if there's anything that you might like to ask. Okay. Well, we do appreciate your time today. And um, if, again, I hope that you got my contact information and I'll just click back to that screen very quickly. Um, again, thank you for joining, and um, if we can help you, if you're interested in other webinars that we've put together, please make sure you check out our website, and if you have any questions or would like additional information, please don't hesitate to contact me. Appreciate you joining this evening for a quick bite, and hope that you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.